हेलो हाय डॉक्टर भरत वेलकम टू इंडिया फर्स्ट एंड लार्जेस्ट मेटाबॉलिक हेल्थ कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड लो कार्ब न्यूट्रिशन कॉन्फ्रेंस सो ग्रेट टू हैव यू हियर यू हैव अ वेरी यूनिक बैकग्राउंड सो थैंक्स फॉर जॉइनिंग अस एंड वी आर डिस्कस यू नो ऑन दोज एंगल्स सो फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ आर व्यूअर्स लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस यू वेरी ब्रीफली सो हाई एवरी वन डॉक्टर भरत कुमार इज अ स्पोर्ट्स मेडिसिन एंड न्यूट्रिशन स्पेशलिस्ट Uh, he was the team doctor for Indian women's elite boxing team, right? So he's really worked on the international stage with our elite sports persons. Uh, he has very closely worked with Sports Authority of India, Sports Authority of Karnataka as a consultant. Uh, he has been a sports person himself, and now as a doctor, he runs Zayathlon Sports Medicine Clinic and Medifit Clinic. Uh, he's a certified LCHF treatment specialist, and. Uh, again as being a sports person he is passionate about sports nutrition helps athlete as well as non athletes with uh, you know improved performance better recovery improving metabolic health and uh, one thing i really noticed on his profile was he is very passionate about treating reversing and preventing chronic conditions so as a doctor he says i would rather use nutrition and exercise before having to use pills right so uh, really resonated with that uh, doctor so welcome uh, to the conference thanks for joining and uh, okay. we would like to get started so the first question i want to ask is you know uh, sort of your uh, quick briefly your journey of a sportsman a sportsman and then how did you become aware of you know this power of nutrition and the low carb approach for your own health okay so first i found out the low carb approach uh, by following professor tim knox okay so this was way back in 2015 and it all uh, the journey all began with uh, my own health i mean i was diagnosed as an asthmatic and then i had severe terrible hives and then extremely poor gut health and then history of weight gain and a lot of issues for which i used to pop in antibiotics like they were peanuts okay but then you know although i am a modern medicine uh, doctor i mean none of the modern medicine medicine actually cured me so i had to dig in deeper to find out to find out why this is not working but then later on uh, when i dug deeper i found out uh, only symptoms are being masked by the modern medicine so the cure uh, or the real root cause is something else then i happened to follow professor tim knox and then uh, the first book i read about nutrition was uh, what your doctor does not know about nutritional medicine that may be killing you by dr ray strand Mm -hmm. so that provided a huge uh, shift from the way i started thinking wherein he uh, was a physician who never used uh, the supplements for 30 years in his practice but then when he started uh, using supplements he was able to even reverse uh, things like fibromyalgia which is uh, one of the most difficult conditions to treat mm -hmm. so then i began focusing on my own uh, nutrition i started to uh, read about nutrition i read like about 100 150 books on nutrition and then i reversed my all problems today i am completely medicine free and then i am i feel better i sleep better so then i thought okay so let me just change the world and then let me extend what the benefits i have reaped uh, for myself uh, mm -hmm. to change the world that's my introduction to into look up amazing. amazing thanks thanks so uh, and when you started sort of you know working with athletes more and more uh you had of course been a sports person yourself and then now working with athletes uh would you would you sort of sort of elaborate on you know the typical idea in their mind about nutrition because they must be sort of for their performance they must be worried about or thinking about at least balanced nutrition etc so what was their usual impression and then we will go to you know how you now change that for them uh well even during my post graduation uh what i have been taught is carb loading okay is mm -hmm. mandatory for uh, especially endurance athletes but it is so so untrue the real problem here is that because of the abuse of the carbohydrates the entire fat burning factory in our body is shut mm -hmm. now the fat burning factory needs a lot of mitochondria i mean we need more, more density of mitochondria which is non existent because we've been using glucose as the primary source of fuel mm -hmm. and that is something that needs to be changed now endurance athletes as uh, contrasting to what they may think they primarily use fat for fuel mm -hmm. 
but then still they think about hitting the wall at the 30 to 30 second kilometer because their glycogen gets exhausted and they, they did not replenish fuel and all that. Mm -hmm. There are people who have fasted for 72 hours and then they have run marathons, full marathons, okay, with I would say 80 to 90 percent of the time than when they used to consume carbohydrates, which means you don't need a single molecule of glucose to fuel your run. Mm -hmm. Where is the energy coming from? The energy is coming from fats, right? And fat is an unlimited source of fuel. So today, the balanced diet, you know, the balanced diet, the phrase itself is a myth, mm -hmm. right? So we are, balanced diet is like consuming a balanced diet for a person who has an unbalanced metabolism is like placing a weight on an unbalanced surface. It will still slip, right? Mm -hmm. So we need something known as a balancing diet. Like let's say a person has uh, high cortisol, high insulin and uh, low testosterone. So they are already unbalanced. Metabolism is unbalanced. So we need something that balances it. But in the, the modern medicine and the modern nutrition thinks of uh, food as just macros and micros. And then it does not, it equates everything to numbers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is the uh, major pitfall of modern nutrition. That is something that we need to change. In fact, Ayurveda actually gives us the three dosha system wherein uh, if one dosha goes up and then one comes down, okay, so we need to give food, okay, which actually balances it and then samatolana is what we call it, right? So that approach is what is actually necessary. Wow, loved your phrasing, right? So not balanced, but balancing food, yes. Uh, yes. you know, to help their uh, health issues. So yes. loved your approach. So, uh, I think it's important to, you know, bust that myth and helping uh, people switch to a fat burning mode. And I think that's what you're doing. Uh, so, so when you typically work with these athletes, uh, do you have a sort of a particular way of going about, you know, how you will arrange their plate or their nutrition? So how does it look like, for example? Uh, well, uh, even before we go to the plate, we need to fix their lifestyle first and the mindset mm -hmm. first. Because mm -hmm. the first thing that we need to start off is ask them to start fasting. When mm -hmm. they are able to uh, achieve 16 to 18 hours of fasting, that is when actually the body has a shift from the carbohydrate to the fat metabolism. And then the more frequently that happens, it is e easier for us to put them on low carb. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So you get started with the factory first. I mean, when the machines are not working, why even get the uh, workforce? Isn't it? Fasting mm -hmm. is the first thing that we ask them to do. And once the fasting is in place for about three weeks, where the fat adaptation has already started, that's when you actually start lowering their carbs. Okay, so first is fasting, then is the low carb, then is increase your exercise. Okay, it is not the other way around. It has to be done in a strategic way. This is a strategy that we use, mm -hmm. right? And uh, this is how it should be done. This is what is uh, works without any kind of side effects and then most efficiently and it balances the hormones and it balances the gut health, of course. Great, great. So uh, there is one more question which sort of comes up, right? When we talk of nutrition for athletes that, I mean, people typically will have this impression that, hey, they are burning so many calories through the day. You know, they can probably eat whatever they want, right? Uh, how would you explain that? Well, Simply put, you can never outrun a bad diet. Mm -hmm. So, see, if you if the hormones are balanced, even if you eat in excess on one particular day, the body has a beautiful brown fat which actually ups your metabolism and then it burns it off. Okay, mm -hmm. let's say you eat less. Okay, so the body takes it from the stores. It's a beautiful mechanism, okay, which we are not actually tapping into, mm -hmm. right? So. Looking, don't look at food as calories. So we look at food as nutrients. We are in an era where we are con uh, consuming an, an energy-rich, nutrient-deficient diet. Look at mm -hmm. what gives you uh, maximum nutrients with minimal energy. Because you already have the fat inside of you, which provides you energy. So kickstart the fat-burning uh, factory okay, and provide maximum nutrition. Like let's say you need 100 grams of protein. See how you can fit in that 100 grams of protein with minimal energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amazing. So, uh, I also have another phrasing uh, to ask you, right? So, can, I mean, you clearly see a lot of fit people around you, right? Because you work with athletes. So, you know, they are able to run well, you know, they can lift weights uh, and play their sport quite well. But looks like 
you still need to help them on the metabolic health side. So it's like, you know, uh, their increased fitness is not really helping them on the internal health. Uh, that's a probably a, I mean, I think I would love for you to elaborate that because a lo lot of people may think that, hey, you know, if I'm working on my fitness, you know, internal health, it will sort of take care of itself. Exactly. So people who are physically fit, they think medically fit, right? Being physically fit and medically fit are completely two different mm -hmm. things. Now, people uh, resort to exercise as a fat burning tool. Okay. Mm -hmm. They think, okay, exercising treats everything. But unless your nutrition is on track, like they say, your abs are made in the kitchen, right? So mm -hmm. unless your food is on track, okay, you are never on track. I mean, I've seen runners, okay, whose HbA1Cs are 5.9, 6.2. Okay, they have high uh, amount of triglycerides because they're loading, loading, loading on the carbs. Okay, mm -hmm. and then they come up with the high HSCRPs, which are like uh, increasing their cardiovascular risk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's because of, again, unbalanced metabolism. Okay, so the, uh, the fat is like extremely less. They have fat deficient, uh, I mean, vitamin deficiency, fat soluble vitamin deficiency. Okay, so you will have to, strike a balance, increase the fats up and then lower the carbs down, moderate your protein just as much as it is necessary. And then that's when your metabolism comes to normalcy, optimize your health, then work on your fitness. Only then you can peak your performance. It is in the same flow. Nice, nice. I think the importance of internal health, metabolic health, as we technically call it, uh, has to be given and worked upon. Uh, so another thing is, right, uh, when you worked with these teams, you know, including our uh, our nation's Indian team, uh, women's boxing team that you worked with, or even the regional team that you worked with. So, w was there, you know, acceptance of what uh, you were telling them or was there a little bit of a pushback? How did you go about that? Okay, so that is, okay, I would like to reserve the answer for that. But then, yeah, so there was a huge gap, of course. Uh, uh, so, from the, there is a lot of uh, unacceptance. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, because of the conventional uh, kind of nutrition that is being prescribed in terms of calories and energy in versus energy out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is not a lot of acceptance. So it takes a lot of time for us to make them understand what actually is correct. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've seen uh, boxers losing weight to fit into their weight category. But in fact, when we do the body composition assessment, they've lost muscle and gained fat. Oh. So that is the most terrible thing that anybody can do. I and mean, it actually hampers your performance. I mean, you're losing the best part, which is the lean body. So right. that, gives, that gives you the answer. Yes, yes. So it must have taken some handholding, you know, calmly explaining uh, the science behind it, as, as I'm sure you probably did, uh, to get that acceptance slowly from them. A lot, a lot. So most, most doctors don't talk about nutrition. Okay, mm -hmm. so it is, uh, there is a separate branch of sports nutrition. Okay, so they come in with their own ideology. While we try to talk, okay, they say, okay, it is not your cup of tea. You are not specialized in that. And then all those hurdles have been there. Yes, it takes a lot of time. It took a lot of time for us to fix it. Right, right. So when you were explaining, you know, that approach of uh, getting somebody to start fasting. So uh, in a way, what you are saying is, slowly they have to become metabolically flexible because they have to go from burning sugar and then to go to fat. Uh, so if they're still on a conventional sort of, you know, high carb kind of a diet, uh, what's your observation? Do they sort of find it difficult to switch into that mode? And how do you handle that if, if it is so? Uh, okay. See, if they are on a high carb and a low protein diet, it makes it more difficult okay. rather than if their proteins are okay. And then if the carbs are high, I see. Okay. So, because the insulin spikes are high and then there's a lot of spike, okay. So, what we do uh, uh, at the beginning is at least uh, decrease the number of meals, okay. So, mm -hmm, most mm -hmm. people look at the three hours, four hours, okay, six meal concept. We put them back onto the conventional three meal concept first, okay, space out the meals mm -hmm. and uh, space out the meals uh, so that we have a 12 hour of eating window, mm -hmm. okay. Then we start slowly uh, tapering down to 10 hours. And then we ask them to like skip either the breakfast or the dinner. Okay. So that we uh, close it down to eight hours or six hours. And then of course, salt water is used a lot uh, to, to manage their electrolytes, which uh, uh, prevents them from having the keto flus and all mm -hmm. those headaches and all those. Perfect. Perfect. And I'm guessing when you were describing those athletes who, you know, perform very well, even fasted, 
So I'm guessing for them also, you tell them to have uh, ample electrolytes. Yes, yes. I mean, electrolyte imbalance is the single most common thing that happens when we cut down uh, the uh, carbohydrates, okay, which mm -hmm. includes the grains and also the uh, vegetable component. So fixing that is the only way we can prevent any kind of side effects. Perfect, perfect. So that's an important point to note for all of us. Uh, another one I wanted to ask you was, uh, since you work with athletes and you know you also have been playing, uh, there is this notion that you know, hey, I want to build muscle, so you know I I will need carbs. Not just that you know I can tolerate carbs, but I will need carbs. And how will I build new muscle on you know this low carb approach? Uh, what's been your observation and how do you explain that part? Well, the number of carbs that you need to build muscle is zero. So there are people who are surviving on a completely carnivore diet. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they are very lean, very muscular, very healthy. Okay, So the body has the process of uh, gluconeogenesis. I mean, it mm -hmm. produces carbohydrates from fats and then, of course, the amino acids and then it can produce whatever glucose it wants. And then ketones are better source of fuel uh, for the muscle than the glucose in itself so when you have the fuel okay when you have the amino acid to build up the proteins okay uh, build up the muscle okay, what else do you need there is no need for anybody to consume even one gram of carbs at least not the refined source of carbs to build muscle now the the post uh, workout is like really hype pre workouts are really hype all they contain is like refined sugar and uh, synthetic preservatives Okay, that is only hampering their gut health, which in turn is hampering their recovery and then it is only bringing the performance down. So supplements are not really working the way it should be working. So in addition to that, I want to sort of ask you, extending that same point, there may be several in our audience, you know, who are uh, going to a gym, you know, exercising and they must be hearing, you know, hey, you should take, uh, you know, this protein powder or that. Uh, so... Would you sort of elaborate a little on, uh, you know, uh, supplements like whey or any other things that you see? And I'm specifically also asking because uh, I know you have uh, your experience of working in this, you know, anti-doping kind of uh, monitoring and activities, which is a very interesting background. Uh, so maybe you can even please connect to that experience. Uh, of course, not everybody may be exposed to those types of substances, but sort of how do you look at this overall area and how is it shaping up? Okay, so the safest uh, the safest source of protein is red meat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have everything in that in the optimal proportions. Okay, and then you don't need anything else if you are a meat eater. Let's say you are a vegetarian. Okay, so mm -hmm. definitely you need the uh, dairy component. Okay, but because the dairy farming involves a lot of uh, growth promoters and then hormones these days, so we will have to restrict dairy if they are allergic to it or it is increasing your inflammatory markers. So mm -hmm. in that case, we will have to use whey protein as a source of protein. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm saying protein is the, the best is because of the composition of the amino acids comes in the optimal proportion that stimulate the yes, plant proteins are on the rise right plant proteins only contribute to the energy component and not the muscle building component whoever is taking plant protein okay they really need to stop wow. plant proteins are not proteins they are more different from the glucose powder that you actually take in they are straight away diverted towards energy synthesis and not towards muscle building at all because they don't have the BCAA in the necessary component, in the necessary uh, ratio. Understood, understood. Amazing. So uh, I think you touched on the uh, amino acid profile, right? So uh, for, for those of us in, in the audience uh, who may not know, could we uh, elaborate that a little more so that you know they understand how to evaluate protein sources? Right. So now there are the amino acids which are essential and non-essential. Non-essential mm -hmm. are already made by the body, but uh, the uh, essential ones are near, they need to be supplemented in the diet. Mm -hmm. Right. But then whatever essential we take also, they have to be in a particular ratio. Okay. So I honestly don't remember the numbers, but they have to be in a particular ratio. Now BCAA to the rest of the amino acid, there is a score. 
Mm-hmm. If that score is uh, fulfilled, then that is a protein that is meant for protein synthesis inside mm-hmm. the body. So mm-hmm. higher is your BCAA. Okay, so then uh, the higher is the stimulation of the uh, muscle protein synthesis. Perfect, perfect. So I think this is going to be critical for those who are uh, not just looking at metabolic health, but also wanting to build more muscle and who are going to the gym and they may be hearing all kinds of advice there because. Uh, you know that that gets showered on us today. There was uh, an entire spectrum. In fact, I mean, see, it's from health, okay, preventive health, prophylaxis, okay, to being therapeutic, mm-hmm. right? It is it covers the entire spectrum from health to fitness to performance. Okay, so for everything, you can use the same principle, and it works for everybody. Perfect. Just the ratios change. Just simply the ratios change. Right, right, and connecting with that, right? My favorite question is. Uh, People think that, hey, you know, if I eat protein, because you're telling me to eat low carb and I'm going to eat more of the fat and the protein, right? So the typical, once they hear high protein, they immediately think of kidney damage. Somehow we have gotten that into our heads. Okay. So before we even arrive at the kidney damage, let me give you a sentence. Now, uh, let's look at a balanced diet, a 2000 calorie diet. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, according to the balanced diet principle, 50% of it is carbs, 20% protein, 30% fats, right? Mm -hmm. Dropping the carbohydrates, period. Mm -hmm. We are not increasing protein, we are not increasing the fats. So, when you drop the carbs from 50 to 25%, you are shaving off 500 calories there. The Mm -hmm. 2000 becomes 1500 and it stays. You can sustain very well on 1500 on a low carb diet because it is tapping into your body fat stores. Mm-hmm. So when you look at the ratios again, the ratio of protein uh, rises from 20 to 30 percent and then fat rises from probably 30 to 40 or 45 percent. So mm-hmm. that is a relative increase and not an absolute increase. The protein is not increasing, fat is not increasing. Just because you cut down the carbs, it's a relative increase. So that's the first point. Second point is that as long as your kidneys are normal, the protein will not damage your kidneys. Mm -hmm. But if your kidneys are already damaged, the ability of the protein, uh, protein handling ability of the kidneys are hampered. That is when you need to moderate. So if your kidneys are fine, don't worry about it. You can go all guns with your proteins, but the right kind of proteins. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, There is one question which is coming in. Uh, So, uh, let's say a person is on, uh, you know, this uh, low carb or even a keto diet, uh, and they are into running. So they are saying that uh, they are taking salt and uh, you know salt water every day. So uh, what sort of uh, benefits that you have seen, you know, around performance as well as you know muscle cramps, all of that. And do you recommend a particular uh, dosage or type of that salt? Right. So now when when we say salt. Uh, when you say electrolytes in particular, most people uh, you may imagine a white salt, isn't it? Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. the white salt or the refined salt is pure sodium chloride. Now, that is not the salt that we need to be having. Okay. Now, we need to be having the sea salt, which contains much more than sodium chloride, potassium, magnesium, silicon, boron, cadmium, all those things. So, they mm-hmm. that is the real salt. So, you use that salt. See, now uh, coming to the dosage part of it, the human mm. uh, body has a salinity of uh, 0.9%. So when we say 0.9%, okay, so we add about 9 grams of salt to the 1 liter of water. So that is isotonic. So that is all you mm. need. Or probably you can add 1 gram extra because you're actually losing the salt and then you maintain that. So hydration does not mean having only water. It means replenishing your water plus your electrolytes. So coming back to the cramps component, cramps are due to electrolyte deficiency is an old theory and definitely not correct. Now mm-hmm. cramps are due to uh, magnesium deficiency and also vitamin D deficiency. Mm. So if you need to fix your cramps, fix your magnesium, fix your uh, vitamin D. Only then you will be relieved of cramps. Because pure salt water will not work. So the type of salt, go back to the rock salt and then the Himalayan pink salt. So that is the best kind of salt. Perfect. Perfect. That is so helpful. 
thanks. So uh, we have about uh, five minutes to go. So I wanted to sort of ask, uh, you know, through Zayatlan and Medifit, you are helping athletes, non-athletes, uh, you know, all of them. And you must be seeing a wide variety of population around you, you know, who needs this help. Uh, which are like sort of two to three main changes that you would suggest, you know, to our audience where they can get started. Uh, maybe you can even divide it as, you know, one on exercise front and one on nutrition front, since you have this unique sports nutrition background, but I'll, I'll sort of, uh, have you elaborate on that, please. Okay. So I would say everybody should fast at least one day in a week. Okay, when we say fast, okay, so it is not like we have like 10 coffees and fast. Okay, it is like plain water with the 10 grams of uh, pink salt is what you sip throughout the day. Okay, mm -hmm. at, achieve at least about 16 to 18 hours once in a week. That is more than enough. Mm -hmm. So that is how, that is the first point. Second point is have a fixed eating window of at least 10 hours. And if you're an athlete who rises earlier in the day, okay, so not more than 12 hours. So skip your pre-workouts. It is absolutely useless. Okay. Mm -hmm. Post-workout shake is still fine. If we, that is, if your breakfast is quite long away. Let's say you train from 5 to 6, you for 6 or 6 30 is post-workout shake makes sense if you're actually having breakfast at 9 o'clock, right? Or you can't have an empty stomach. So that is the other thing. So then, of course, once your body has started adapting to the fat, the cravings automatically come down. Okay, so then start having a variety of vegetables because mm -hmm. I'm not saying fiber here. I'm not promoting fiber. Uh, we uh, Fruits and vegetables have a lot of microbes that mm -hmm. are necessary for us. We live with cohabitat with 40,000 species of microbes that are necessary for us. And then they build our metabolism. A huge part of our metabolism is by the microbes. So take a probiotic. And then do not say, I am consuming curd. I don't need a probiotic. No, that is wrong. Because today we are pasteurizing milk. Okay, the milk proteins are degraded. The enzymes are killed. The bacteria is killed. So whatever dairy we are consuming is not the great, not the raw variety of it. So please take your probiotics. So that is on the nutrition front. Exercise front, don't abuse endurance exercise. Okay, start building muscle, and muscle is what maintains your bones, mm -hmm. okay, and your metabolism. So, a huge part of your metabolism comes from your muscle musculoskeletal system. And only do endurance exercise as per your goal, but everybody needs to lift weights. Perfect, perfect. I think that's amazing. So, and just one uh, quick question which came from our audience. So, maybe just a one liner answer. Uh, in one sitting, how much whey, if they are using whey powder, you know, what's the dosage that you would recommend? See, we don't normally absorb anything more than 45 grams of proteins uh, in a session. Mm -hmm. But then the thing is, uh, see, now nobody is actually 100% compliant, right? So what we, the anabolic window is open for 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can consume more protein in your breakfast or your lunch and then may not be able to consume it in the dinner. Okay. So that is still okay. Right. So there is nothing like, okay, you consume 51 grams. Okay. So I'm going into kidney failure. No, that is not how it works. It is still okay to consume more. Okay. The consuming more only suppresses your uh, appetite and then makes you feel fuller. And then so that you can uh, skip your meal and that is how it works. Perfect. Wow. So very enlightening points. Thank you so much. Uh, we are almost to the end. Uh, let me request Shashi to join, please. Yeah. Thank you, Vandar. Hi, Shashi. Dr. Bharat, thank you very much for coming in this occasion and speaking on a very, very important topic of sports, nutrition, and low carb. And frankly, I never knew about you. It's only thanks to one of our DLF members, Avinash, who told that you have to be included. And we immediately told, yes, for sports nutrition, we will call Dr. Bharat. I am so happy that you came here and shared your knowledge. But 30 minutes is not enough. It, we are not doing justice to talk. We are going to have a little more, more extended version of this talk, maybe in, in DLF podcast. Thank you very much for to spare. Thank for you for the session. Thank you so much.